Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. May he, as your good shepherd, lead you and guide you, direct you and feed you each and every day. There was a young man, a little boy actually, his name was Stephen. And Stephen loved to go to church and Sunday school. His mom and dad would get him up early. They would get him dressed and ready to go. They would get, they, he would get to church. He didn't always know what was going on in the service, but he loved to sing the songs. And then his favorite part came. He got to go to Sunday school. And he would go to Sunday school, and each day, the teacher, each Sunday, the teacher would teach him about something about Jesus. She would teach him about uh, what it means to be a child of God, and all those stories in the Old Testament and the New Testament about God's love for us. One of the things the teacher wanted, though, was each day, that's, each Sunday, Stephen would have to memorize a Bible verse. And it took him a long time. But eventually, he memorized Psalm chapter 23. The whole thing. It took him weeks and weeks, but he was happy to stand in front of the whole class and repeat those words. His parents were there too. They were mighty proud of him. Two years later, Stephen was now nine years old. He had learned those familiar words, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But it had been a while since he'd been in church. His parents, things had not been going well for them lately. In fact, many nights he found himself lying awake, having trouble falling asleep. They'd moved to a new house. His dad seemed to be home a lot more than he used to be. Things just didn't seem to be right, especially at night. Mom and dad would, they would sit over the, the kitchen table and they would talk together and, they, and, and usually they would yell. Even though he'd lock himself in his room and cry, crawl into the covers and pull his pillow over his head, he could still hear them. Those familiar words came back to him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me in paths of righteousness. He, he was reminded of those words, those words he'd learned. And he was able to somehow go to sleep even amidst the loudest of yelling. Fast forward now five years. Stephen is starting a new day at a new school. He's just preparing to become, as a sophomore, and he's starting at a new school because his mom and dad had got divorced. Mom and he, he and mom moved to Oklahoma, and they're living with grandpa and grandma. He got, ba- he got confirmed a little late because even though he had been in church, it had been a while again. And, but m- grandpa and grandma's rule was, if you're in my house under my roof, you have to go to church. But it had been a while because since his confirmation, he, he, had, he was able to come up with more excuses. He, he kind of would promise grandma that he'd go to church, but... He'd sleep in or something else would come up. So his first day of school has come at this new school. A sophomore here, and he wasn't particularly coordinated. He wasn't particularly outgoing. And so he hadn't gone out for sports. He hadn't joined any clubs or groups, and so he really didn't know anybody. He didn't know anybody from his church youth group, and so he was a little apprehensive, but he was looking forward to it. He went to algebra. He went to social studies. He went to English, and then it was lunchtime. Well, the unthinkable happened. As he was carrying his tray out to sit down at a table, he tripped. His tray went sky high. He went to the floor. Food hit hit the ground. The The pans and the plates and silver were clattered. It seemed like everybody was looking at him. He could hear the snickers. Even the teachers seemed to be staring. He silently prayed to himself, Oh, Lord, just... Make me go away just a minute. And, but he picked things up. He wandered back to the trash can and threw things away. And he silently prayed those words, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me to quiet pastures. I lay down beside quiet waters. Those words, were he learned them a while ago. They were not quite as firmly planted in his head, but he knew that he, right then he needed God to, to lead him to those quiet waters and He prayed. He found a table to sit at where it seemed like somehow those other students hadn't noticed. Three years later, Stephen was strapping on his gear, his equipment, along with his fellow infantrymen in the army. They were going out for patrol. They were stationed in Kabul, Afghanistan. Now, he had gone on many patrols. Almost as soon as he got out of boot camp, he was immediately assigned to to go to Afghanistan. And so he was used to this, but the violence had recently raised a little bit. 
Things seemed to be a little more dangerous than they once were. Things were not quite as safe as they had been in the past. As they went out, something no one ever wanted to see happened. As they were traveling along in their convoy, right in front of him, not ten yards, his commanding officer's Humvee was hit by a rocket-propelled grenade or an RPG. The flash was so bright that he was blinded for a moment. The thunderous sound of the explosion was so loud that they couldn't even hardly think. But quickly, he and his fellow soldiers, what they'd been trained to do, they quickly took cover. They sprayed the Afghan countryside with bullets, but by then, the shooter had already left. Oh, in those moments, there was fear and there was doubt in his heart. There was pain and there was, there was definitely loss. He again was reminded of those words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He prepareth a table in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over. At that time, it didn't feel like his cup ran over. At, to- at that time, it didn't feel like he was safe in the presence of his enemies, and so all he could pray is, Oh Lord, help me to face my enemies. Help me to get out of this situation alive. His enemies, though, were not the worst ones, were not outside of the Humvee, but the ones in his own heart and mind were those that afflicted him the worst, as he had such great fear and doubt. He he wasn't sure how he was going to get through another day, much less another three months of his deployment. Many years later, Stephen married his wife, Michelle. He and Michelle, they, well, they were... They were ready to have a child. And she was nine months pregnant. Michelle had been a lifelong Christian, and she led Stephen back to the church. She invited Stephen to go with her, and eventually they started going together. They joined Word of Life Lutheran Church, and he even got asked to be a trustee. They were pretty active. They felt like they were part of the family. One day, he got the phone call. It was two words. It's time! And, she call, and his wife called him, and he quickly left work, dropping everything, telling his boss, and running out the door, quickly going to the hospital. There, Michelle gave birth to a little baby boy, seven pounds, six ounces. And that little baby boy was a beautiful baby. And they brought that little child to the waters of holy baptism. They heard the beautiful message of grace. And as the pastor poured the water over the head of their son, He thought to himself, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. For this was one of the most wonderful days of his life. Not only had his child been born, but now the child was entering into the family. That little boy, his Christian name was Joseph. And as that little boy came into the family of God, well, Michelle and Stephen, they were going to prepare that child to be part of the family. Even though his mom and dad had long been divorced, they were able to come together on opposite sides of the baptismal font, but to be there for that special day. Joseph was now 11 years old. He had enjoyed going to Sunday school. Mom and dad had brought him on a regular basis. He had gotten used to just going and hearing the words of God in his classes with his teachers. He learned Psalm 23 faster than his dad did, and he couldn't help but brag about it a little bit. But today, today was a little different. Even though they had gone to church together, he knew they were going to the hospital together. For all that week, mom and dad had been taking Joseph up to the hospital, and they'd been going to see grandma. It was a little, it was a little hard for Joseph, because he knew that mom and dad were scared. They hadn't said anything, but their voices... They, he could hear it in that. He could see it in their eyes. And they went up to, they went up to the hospital, and, and he was he was scared. He loved Grandma dearly, but she had so many wires and tubes coming out of her. He, and she couldn't speak to him. She, she had a, a, a tube down her throat to help her breathe. And and so he would smile at her, and he would lean in a little bit, but he was scared to get too close. As they went home that evening, they. They said their prayers before they went to bed as they usually did. And she was again reminded of those, uh, he was reminded of those words. 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. As he sat there praying with his family, he, he remembered another part. Yea, though I will go through, walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. As they prayed together, they didn't know that just two days from now, then, Tuesday, that grandma would go to be with Jesus. Joseph cried. Stephen cried. Even mom cried. But the pastor read an important passage at, the, at her funeral. And that passage brought them hope and comfort. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. They knew that that was the promise that was for grandma. That that was the promise for each of them. That grandma's life would, had not just come to an end, but it had come to its beginning. She would now be with Jesus no longer having tubes or wires coming from her, no longer feeling pain or death, but be with him forever. And that one day they would see him, see her again. As Stephen reflected back on this time, he thought about all the things that had happened in his son's life, taking him to Little League, teaching him about the scriptures. He thought about the times that were good. He thought about the times that were bad. But today, the joy could not be matched. Because today, as, as, as they were coming together as a family, they were doing so in the church. They were doing so knowing that, that's, that Joseph would be marrying a wonderful Christian woman. That, he, that, he, that they had raised him right. That as they went to the church that day, he stood in front of the church. Stephen stood there looking down the, looking down the aisle waiting for, well, waiting for Grace, Joe's fiance, to come in. But there was a sense of, of peace in his heart because he knew the promise of God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Again, one of these good, beautiful events of the Lord providing for him, providing for his son, a wife, who was a good Christian woman, a wife who would love him and care for him, a wife that he could love and care for. And as time passed, that day seemed to permanently be etched in his mind. That day, that reminder of, of that marriage, that beautiful ceremony, the celebration, as he thought back, he thought of his grandkids, he thought of his Loved ones, he thought of just how often the Lord had been with him. As he looked back in his life, he said his evening prayers. He turned to the Lord and he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he prayed that as he, as he closed his eyes to go to sleep. Little did he know that as he was closing his eyes that night, that that would be the last night that he would ever open, that that would be the last time he ever opened them on earth. As he closed his eyes, he knew that he would dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. As he closed his eyes, he did so with peace, knowing that Christ, his good shepherd, was with him. And those were the words that were read at his funeral. As the, fam as the, as the pastor in the congregation read those words, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside quiet waters. Those words, those words were spoken with the full assurance that now he had been set free to be with his Lord forever and eternity. Those are the words of Christ, our good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. I will lead you, I will feed you, I will be with you each and every day of your life. And I have loved you with an everlasting love. I am the good shepherd. I will be with you in the, those times that are good in those times that are bad. I am the good shepherd. I will one day lead you to be with me forever in heaven. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we do give thanks to you that you are our good shepherd, that you have given your life for us, your sheep, that you have given it on the cross that one day we might join you forever in heaven. Help us each day to walk in your paths. Help us to follow along in the way that you have prepared for us. 
Lord, we know that throughout our lives that there will be many, many wolves, bears, lions, various attacks on us. Help us to trust you even in those times. That as our good shepherd, you will never leave us or abandon us. Even in times when we grow far from you, go seeking, other, seeking after other shepherds, we know that you never turn from us. That you are constantly reaching for us to draw us back. Reassure us with the promise that we will one day be with you forever. And may your peace dwell with us now and always. Amen.